Good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk to you about emotions in the workplace, and more specifically how men and women react differently. Hostile and toxic emotions at work. Verbal and nonverbal behaviors take place in professional environments every day. These behaviors include, but do not limit, loud and angry tantrums, rudeness, impoliteness, humiliating or ridiculing someone in front of others, coercion, withholding needed information, and silent treatment of someone in front of others. Counterproductive work behavior or CWB, is defined as intentional toxic behavior in the workplace that is harmful to a company and its employees. These behaviors are deeply rooted in aggression, revenge, reprisal, and deviance. These behaviors have also been known to lead to harmful acts on subordinates. Toxic, by definition, means poisonous, harmful, and deadly. Toxicity in the workplace is rooted in negative emotion in three dimensions. The first dimension is psychologically recurring, which is something that weighs on an individual and often feels psychologically uncertain. The second dimension is disconnecting, which is an individual's disconnection from her social network or colleague. The third and final dimension is draining, an individual's mental and physical energy levels being exhausted or depleted by toxic and harmful experiences. Gender Differences and Status A study found that men who express angry emotion in the workplace are often given a higher status by his peers. Anger is an expression of power and dominance. That same study found that women who expressed angry emotion were seen at a lower status and often received lower wages. Unlike men, women's occupational rank doesn't seem to influence their salary or status in any way. When a man expresses anger, he is doing his job. When a woman expresses anger, she is simply seen as an angry person. Anger is a status emotion. Professional women face a quandary in the professional world every day. Anger can be a very powerful professional tool when managing a group of people. It can also lower the status of a professional woman. It is important for a woman to find a balance between that powerful tool and her status being diminished. How emotions are expressed. Emotional display rules are prescriptive social norms that dictate how, when, and where emotions can be expressed. Both men and women believe that women are much more likely to express a wide variety of emotions, including happiness and sadness. 
It's also been said that men should not cry in the workplace and women should not get angry. A lack of emotion with exception to anger and pride is seen as a symbol of masculinity. Paul, Carter, and Horgan, researchers on emotional expression and gender, suggest that women are generally more facially expressive and smile more often than men. Wingerholtz and Shears also refer to evidence that suggests women are more likely to cry and cry more frequently than men do. Fisher's review of the gender and emotion literature suggests that women experience no more emotion than do men, but are commonly known to be more emotionally expressive. Consequently, Fisher suggests that the claim that women are more emotional than men is more telling in terms of information about cultural stereotypes than about actual gender differences in emotions. This reasoning is also consistent with the normative regulation propositions of social role theory, which suggest that experiences, including emotional experiences, are constrained by norms that form from gendered social roles and expectations. We conform to the stereotypes of emotion for fear of what may happen if we express the wrong emotion. Models of stereotype-based criticism suggest that people face negative consequences when they do not act in accordance with gender predispositions. Lewis, in 2000, found that male leaders received lower effectiveness ratings when expressing sadness as compared to neutrality, and female leaders received lower effectiveness ratings when expressing anger as compared to neutrality. Gender Roles Women are often working in jobs in which they must perform emotional labor. Women are seen as naturally nurturing and caring and more suited than men for jobs that require emotional skills. Jobs themselves are indeed gendered. The emotional tasks that workers perform in lower-ranking, female-dominated service jobs is constant with beliefs about women's emotionality. On the other hand, the types of emotional tasks, or lack thereof, male-dominated jobs are more consistent with beliefs about men's emotionality. Emotional regulation. Gross, in 1998, defined emotional regulation as the process by which individuals influence which emotions they have, when they have them, and how they experience and express them. Situation selection involves approaching or avoiding certain people places, or objects in order to regulate emotions. Anticipating a hostile environment can allow someone to avoid it and the conflict that comes along with it. 
You are the only person that can control and dictate your emotions. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned for more information on emotions in the workplace.